In this video, I'm going to talk about thyroid hormone production. The thyroid gland is located in the neck, in the lower part of the neck. So if this is someone's head, it's located down here. And it sits in front of the trachea. Now in the thyroid gland, there are these little kind of apparatuses which consist of a ring of cells surrounding a ball of fluid. Now this fluid is in the lumen uh, and we call it colloid. Colloid is a very general term. It's Greek for glue-like. So it's just kind of a thick liquid. These cells around the outside are called thyroid follicular cells. And this whole apparatus is called a thyroid follicle. So I'm going to take a section through here and blow it up down here. So these are the thyroid follicular cells that I'm drawing here. And this is a lumen in here of the follicle. And this is the blood out here. Or rather, there would be blood vessels. Now the first thing to consider is that these follicle cells produce a whole lot of this protein called thyroglobulin, which they secrete by exocytosis into the lumen of the follicle. And this molecule is a big long chain, a big long peptide chain, with lots of tyrosine rings or tyrosine side chains on it, like this. And we'll get back to what that does later. Now iodine is very important in the production of the thyroid hormones, and it's the only known function of iodine in the body. And iodine is brought into the cell in this NIS transporter, which is a sodium iodide symporter. And this is brought into the follicular cells, and then the iodide is brought out of the follicular cells into the lumen by a transporter with a fantastic name known as pendrin. So once the iodide's in the lumen, it gets converted into atomic iodine by an enzyme called thyroperoxidase. So here's our atomic iodine here. Now along with the thyroglobulin, these come together and the iodine attaches to various spots on the thyroglobulin. And it attaches to these tyrosine rings, and it can do this in one of two ways.
The iodine can attach to just one spot, like this, or it can attach to two spots. So you can have either one iodine or two iodine on each of these tyrosine rings. If there's just one, then we call it MIT, and if there's two, we call it DIT. So here's one example of MIT and three examples of DIT. DIT and MIT stand for di or mono iodotyrosine. Now these tyrosine molecules can be joined together and that can lead to the formation of MIT plus DIT which gives us a molecule with three iodines which we call T3 or DIT plus DIT which gives us a molecule with four iodines called T4 and this is attached still to the thyroglobulin. The thyroglobulin then gets taken inside the follicular cells and cut up so that the T3 and T4 are just present and they get secreted out into the bloodstream again. Now T3 stands for triiodothyronine and T4 stands for tetraiodothyronine but it's more commonly called thyroxine and that's an overview of thyroid hormone production